What is it I'm listening to? The group's called Amphibians, the Moist Screwdriver. Mm -hmm. It is the love song. People listen to this voluntarily? Monica, one generation never understands the music of the following generation. Claire, it's four o'clock. Oh, no. The boy, it's Sandy Layton time. Well, she's the greatest. Hello, boring Midwesterners. Why don't you farmers just stop watching that corn grow for a minute? Give us a call. Yo, somebody paid that phone bill. You're on the air. Hello? You're on the air. Hello? Am I on the air? Not anymore. Well... Folks. If you're not smart enough to talk on the radio, it's no wonder you're losing those farms. You all sound like those guys that call up my daughter. I should probably just buy that spot in the trailer park right now. Get it up. Hey, Claire. You get a real funny mom. Yeah, she's hilarious. And this jacket. Yeah, I stole it. No. Really? Yeah. If you want one, I can get you one. I don't know. Maybe. All right. Change your mind. It's yours. That's Sandy's daughter, also known as Claire, also known as your next assignment. What am I supposed to do? Help her and her mother understand each other's music. But you just said that never happens. Well, you never say never in a business like this. Sometimes the things that you think will never happen do. And they're gonna need each other then. Earwax? No, thank you. When you walk down the road, every bird. the air. Hi, Sandy. Uh, this is Mel. Gibson? Uh, no. Call back when you're Mel Gibson. Yes, Sandy. Let's see what else we've got here. Whoa, speaking of wasting my time, my very own personal assistant, Arlene, left a message on my machine this morning saying she wasn't going to come in today. So why don't we just find out what this is all about, shall we? Hello? Arlene, where are you? Oh, hi, Sandy. I'm sorry about today. I am so bloated. I can't even button my pants. Arlene, yeah. we're on the air. We are? Arlene, I don't pay you to get bloated. But I pay you to work Sandy, for Sandy, I'm sick. You're fired. What? Let's go to a commercial. Are you trying to have me? She fired her for being bloated? Did she really do that? No, she's getting weirder every day. I, um... Uh, I guess that's my cue. Fly, Miss Wings, fly. Did you know that you, yes, you can be part of the Sandy Latham Show? That's right. One masochistic listener will become my co-host, translate victim, for an entire week of laughs, mostly at your expense. So just send that last-minute postcard to the I am nothing, Sandy is God sweepstakes right here at this station. Now, the lucky loser will be selected at random tomorrow. Okay, just one more commercial and then I'm going to ruin the next listener's life. Don't go away. It's Omega's economic forecast. Where is everybody? Uh, Sandy, there's someone here to see you. Who? Hello, Sandy. I'm here to interview for the job. What job? The job is your new assistant. We <laughs> just fired her. Two seconds ago. Ah, then I'm not too late. Well, just come on in. Hi, I'm Sandy. Hello, Monica. 
Have you done radio before? No. There's nothing to it. You just sit down in that chair and you talk on that microphone and follow my lead. Okay, stand by. We're back. Change in plan during the commercial. An obviously desperate young woman came all the way down here to the studio to interview for the recently vacated post of personal assistant to Sandy Latham. What's your name, dear? Monica. You're not from around here, are you? No, no, I'm not. Well, good. That's one thing in your favor already. Do you know how to operate a backhoe? Haven't the foggiest. Good. Here comes the big one. Do you bloat? Not at all. OK. What I need is, oh, someone to arrange my personal appearances, file my fan mail, organize the book I'm writing, maybe a little light dusting. Just your general all-round slave. Are you up for that? I think I can handle that. Have you done any animal training? Do you have a dog at home? Worse, a teenage daughter. Oh, I think that'll be just fine. Well, fasten your seatbelt because you start tomorrow and we'll be right back. You're listening to WGOL 107 FM. Actually, Claire is a terrific kid. You are going to love her. Looking at you. Do you have something to eat? Yeah. The prom is getting closer. There's still time. Well, he better ask you before all the good tuxes get rented and he's stuck with something green. I told Jamie, get a black tux or I am not going. Yeah, right. <laughs> you think he'll ask me? I think he wants to. I mean, it's either you or Emily Short. What if you just ask him? Are you insane? I'm not desperate. Sure you are. You've dreamed about going to the prom since your first Barbie doll. I mean, face it, girl. It's the defining moment of your life to date. Your mother was so funny yesterday, Claire. Go away, Crystal. You know, I think if I had a mother like that, I'd kill myself. Thanks. It's all unresolved sexual tension, really. You see, divorced women need a place to put their anger. My mother picks fights with the mailman. Same thing. Only it's not so humiliating. Shut up, Crystal. Well, it is humiliating. She makes a fool of herself and you. Take it back! No! Take it back! Miss Latham. Look over her head, please. Great, you didn't even hear what you said. Let her go. No! Claire! I take it back! Okay, we have a winner in the co-host contest, although... From what I've seen so far, I am using the term winner very loosely. Hi, Sandy. It's nice to be here. Wait, it's early. This is Tess. And, well, Tess, you are a big woman, aren't you, my dear? Well, I have a big heart, and it needs room. Hey, it's got it and then some. Well, I guess yours doesn't. That's why you're such a bony little thing, huh? Hey, hey, hey. Look out, Des Moines. Tess is in town. Tammy, from Council Bluffs, you're on the air with Big Tess and, uh, uh Lil' Sandy. Hi, Tess, Sandy. Uh, this is Tammy from... Hi. Hello. I got your computer fixed. And I worked out a whole new filing system that I think you'll love. And I tried to answer your fan letter, but... Just one letter? It was strange. Somebody asked for a recipe. Oh, when I first started at the station, I was doing a cooking show. I used to be a home ec teacher, believe it or not. So, how did you... Turn into this. I got divorced very badly. I started insulting the pot roast on the air, taking it out on the guest chef. 
The ratings zoomed and it got moved to prime time. What's the recipe? Lemon souffle. Mm. I'll look it up. Anything for my public. <laughs> Hello. You must be Claire. I've heard so much about you. Who are you? I'm Monica. I'm your mother's new assistant. I can't wait for us to become friends. If you're my mother's new assistant, we won't know each other long enough to be friends. Mm. It's so good. Monica cooked. It's not even in her job description. Oh, well, I don't get the chance to cook very much. Mm. A couple of my friends asked me to get an autograph. Well, sure. And this is for Gabe and for Megan. And I'm um, going on a field trip, and you need to sign the consent form. It's in there, too. We go in. I told you, on a field trip. Don't get wise. I forgot. That's your job, right? Just sign right there. A field trip? How lovely. I've seen a lot of really beautiful fields. Let me see that again. <sighs> Disciplinary report. I got into a fight. A fight? Some girl was hassling me about your show. So it's just really all my fault? Well, if it wasn't for you, it never would have happened. Why do you keep talking about me like that? I can't believe it. And I can't believe you fired Arlene right on the air. I did not fire Arlene. Her husband got a job and she's moving to Milwaukee. And it was a bit we were saving for a slow day. So what am I? A bit, too. Honey, just stop it. It has nothing to do with you and you know it. It's, just, it's an act. It's a character I play. It puts food on the table. It puts a roof over our head. It pays for all your clothes. And it's going to pay for your college. Don't you remember what it was like when Daddy left and we didn't have any money and we had all those bills to pay? You want to go back to that? I don't. It takes a little sacrifice. And I'm the sacrificial lamb, right? Claire. Mom, I'm just sick of all my friends teasing me all the time. Then I guess they're not your friends. Now, about this. You're grounded for two weeks. What? One week for fighting and one week for lying to me. That means I missed the prom. The only senior prom I'll ever go to, ever. OK. You're grounded except to go to the prom. Then how am I going to go buy my dress? Fine. You're grounded except to buy your dress and go to the prom. No one's even asked me to go yet. What are we talking about? Mom! Claire! Uh, excuse me, but I think in order for Claire to be asked to the prom, she has to be somewhere where there are boys. Yeah. That's right. Okay. You're grounded after the prom. Daddy wouldn't ground me at all. Well, you don't live with Daddy. Wish I did. Well, today you're living with me. And as for this, I'm going to check box B. Parent-teacher meeting with homeroom advisor. Why don't you just send the lamb to the slaughterhouse now? Get it over with. Claire. Don't worry, Mother. It's just a bit. WGOS News Time, 145. Magazines. An invitation to speak at the Pessimists of America oh. convention. And something here from a mortgage company, March 2nd, notice. Oh, it's a computer error. I'll take that. Good morning, Tess. Nice outfit. That's what she says now. On the air, it'll be a sack of potatoes. <laughs> she is so nice. But nice stinks on the radio. Sandy. Todd, hi. This is Monica, my new assistant. Hi, Monica. Todd Barber, station manager. Hello, Todd. It's a nice station you have here. Sure is, thanks to Sandy. Which reminds me, you and I need to powwow today. Well, I really don't have any time today. Neither do I. How about uh, right before you go on, say 3 o'clock? I guess. Super. See you then. Monica? The parent-teacher conference is at 3.15. I know. Could you cover for me? 
Oh, I don't know. I'm neither a parent nor a teacher. Consider this in your job description under please. I'm looking for Mr. Ritchie. Is he owe your money? <laughs> no. Jeff Ritchie, at your service. Come on in. Hello, my name is Monica. Hi, Monica. I have a parent-teacher conference, but you can wait. Well, actually, that's why I'm here. I'm Sandy Latham's personal assistant. Ah. Yeah, she always sends an assistant. Please. Thank you. The one time she did show up, she went on the air the next day, made fun of my tie, and I haven't seen her since. It's a perfectly lovely tie. Well, it wasn't this tie, but thank you. So how long has Claire been having disciplinary problems? Since her parents divorced about two years ago and her mom became the mouth that roared. The radio show. Mrs. Latham is in the spotlight, and teenagers want to be anywhere but in the spotlight. They want to be able to fit in. Claire can't do that. She can't be like her friends and fit in. Her mother won't let her. She's turning into a very angry young girl. Sounds serious. She's a good kid. Right now, she's on the line. She could go either way. Move it, guys. You're late. So what can I do to help Mr. Ritchie? Well, for starters, you can call me Jeff. Jeff? What else can I do to help? You could come to the prom. Me to the pro? No. <laughs> I don't think so. No, 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 as a chaperone. Look, Mrs. Latham clearly is not going to make the time. I think it would be very good for Claire to know that somebody is making time to support her. So this is for Claire, then? Oh, of course. Jeff, you're very kind, but Claire hasn't even been asked yet. Well, word in the teacher's lounge is that Eric is either going to ask her or Emily Short, but Claire, big favorite. Well, in that case, we'll see you there. Bye. Knock, knock. Come on in, Sandy. Close the door. Ooh, close the door. What's up? Sandy, haven't I always been honest with you? I have absolutely no idea. Well, I have. I've always been there to kiss up to you when things are going great, and I've always been there to kick you when they haven't. Is this a kissing or a kicking day? Hmm. Your show's losing steam. Calls are down 60%. Been a bad ratings period all around. The other night, the sports trivia guys didn't get any calls. They were asking each other questions. I'm getting pressure from upstairs. They're doing research again. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And either I get the numbers up, or my numbers up. Well, what do you want me to do? Do what you were doing when people were listening. I think I am. I can't make them listen. You have to make them listen. That is why you are here. And if you want to stay here, you need to come up with something new, pronto. Fine, I'll take care of it. I got a whole bunch of stuff I've been saving. Good stuff? Great stuff. All right, that's my girl. <laughs> You're on in five. Okay. <laughs> See ya. Bye bye. I was filling in for your mum with Mr. Ritchie. What a surprise. I thought maybe we could go shopping. I gotta be at work in an hour. Well, we have time. I need to get a dress for the prom, so do you. You have a date to the prom? Sure. Boy, this is getting really depressing. No, I'll be chaperoning. You'll be the one with the date. Nobody's gonna ask me. Teacher's Lounge has you three to one favorite over Emily Short. You're kidding. I'm gonna die. Come on. Claire, it's beautiful. I know. But you're only missing one thing. You know what? Uh, date. Monica says I have to have faith. It's a nice dress, Claire. 
Look awful hot next to me at the prom. Thanks, Jake, but I'd rather impale myself on the Washington Monument. Is that a no? Don't you have a meeting with your parole officer that night? Claire, watch this. You can't do that. Oh, no? Who's gonna stop me? That's what I thought. See you around. Claire, don't look. I said don't look! Oh, God. I really can empathize with a bad marriage. I, mean, I will never know why I married my ex-husband, but it's a whole lot like buying a couch. It looks great in the store until you get it home, okay? Let's go to the next call. Let's see what is going on in town this week. Well, there's the pig races, and then there is the oat-eating contest, but... Let me tell you what the hot topic around my house has been. It is the upcoming prom. Now, Tess, did they have proms when you were a girl? It was just one party after another. Ooh, I'll bet. I will just bet. Ah, uh, yes, the prom. All you locals out there are spiffing up those formal overalls, borrowing your dad's tractor. How was your prom? Oh, please, I didn't go. Proms are pretentious, they are expensive, they are overrated. Oh, and... nobody asked you, huh? Here you go. Thanks. Oh, he's coming this way. Don't leave me, Amy. Yeah, right. Okay. We just set a radio record. It has been four minutes since our last call. Is there a power line down or something? Okay, well... I guess it's time to announce the new contest that we're gonna have right here at this station. My daughter, Claire, has got no date for that upcoming prom. And she really, really wants one. So, we're gonna have a clarathon. What? Now, if you're a man, Sandy Latham Show. Yes, day, and what's your name? Tom? Just but ugly. Sandy, that's wrong. You're right. I am sorry. I meant facially impaired. Claire, you gotta hear this. Uh-huh. Hi. Hi. Now, Claire is 16. Solid 7 out of 10. Possible 8, but granted, I am her mother. What? Skin is pretty good. Oh, pretty fair dancer. This I know. I have seen her dancing around the house in her underwear a thousand times. So listen. If she sounds good, just give me a call. I think I changed my mind. Tell me why you would like to take her to the prom, because you do not want Eric. to miss the clarathon. A group of conservative private sector economists who follow the Fed's moves issued a statement on Monday warning that another rate increase now would run the risk of tipping the U.S. economy into a recession. Some show today, huh? So I heard. Well, I'd hate to be that kid. I can't believe she did it. Desperate times, desperate woman. How could she do that to her own daughter? Sandy felt she had no choice. It's hard to believe that Sandy feels much of anything. Well, don't you believe it. Now, I'm not saying what she did was right, but she had her reason. It wasn't a good one. But if you weren't so busy running around acting like a teenager, you'd see how desperate a mother can get. I'm not acting like a teenager. Oh, what are you wearing to the prom, Miss Wings? There's a lot more at stake here than a dream date for Claire. So you get your angel butt back to business or you're grounded. Now put that in your halo and smoke it. Have a good show. 
Thanks. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Monica. Bill, three minutes to air. dead air and I had to think of something. Well, you sure did. God, I hate you. Oh, Claire, oh, you just don't I... give a damn, do you? Please don't talk to me like that. You're my daughter. Not your daughter. I'm material for your stinking show. I'm a joke. You use me. You use Daddy. You use complete strangers just to get people to listen to the radio. The radio, Mother. You crucify people just to fill up air. You know that's not who I really am. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Whoever you are, you just ruined my life. I didn't think the prom was that big a deal. Well, it's a big deal to me. But that doesn't count. You just don't care how people feel. I want to go live with Daddy. Now I know why he left. Hold it. You want to know why your father left? He didn't want the responsibility. He didn't want the mortgage. He didn't want the car payment. And he didn't want a wife who expected him to give up his girlfriends. Oh, yeah. Your fabulous father left me and you. He traded us in on a newer model. You want to go live with him? Honey, I'm sorry. He didn't want you then, and he doesn't want you now. And it breaks my heart to tell you that. Do you think I'm a bitch? It's nothing compared to the bitch I have ever Just because he hurt you doesn't give you the right to make everybody else pay for it. Hi, it's me. No, I'm okay. Just have no life, that's all. Look, you know that guy Jake? What's his last name? I don't know, Amy. That's why I'm calling you. Well, ask around. I gotta talk to him tonight. Gotta get out of here. Well, just find out. Don't tell anybody. I was going to the prom, but my date got sick. Hoof and mouth? No, appendicitis. I really want to go, but if I went by myself, I'd be like a loser. Well, if the prom dress fits. What? I Donna, baby, this is Tess. Do you mind? Go ahead and knock yourself out. Huh? Donna, this is your prom, and you have a right to be there. Just keep moving, and don't dance with any boy more than once. There's somebody else's date. <laughs> OK. Just smile and have a good time. God bless you, baby. Wow. Thanks a lot, Tess. Well, wasn't that warm and fuzzy? I'm going to get out of here before I lose my lunch. But keep those faxes coming to the Clarathon. I'll see you tomorrow. Remember, Des Moines, you're not so good. Sandy, Todd was looking for you. I'm sorry, Sandy. Times change. You got to change with them. But the, the whole prom thing is working. We're picking up. No, Sandy. You're dying out there. People are tired of abuse. They want some relief. 
That contest winner's getting more calls than you are. You're not hiring her? I don't know. I gotta do something. Look, I can tone it down. I can be warm and loving. I can. What do you want me to do? Bring you back as Mother Teresa? You just sold out your own kid. Nobody's gonna forget that. I'm sorry, Sandy. You were flavor of the month. The month just changed. Sandy, you got a telephone call, line three. Take a message. Claire School. I said it's important. Hello. This is she. She's my daughter, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What do you mean missing? It's right in here. Yeah, we can get fixed up, no problem. You'll be on your way to, uh... Wait, where are you going? L.A., I think. Thought your dad lived in Chicago. <laughs> I can't go there. All right, look, just, uh, just be cool with Monty, OK? Jake. Yeah, it's me, man. Chit chat, we're gonna talk business. Business? I hear you got access to new CDs. Access? She's almost assistant manager. Now, what are you, the agent? Okay, you get me five CDs a day for three months, a thousand cash. Three months? I thought I could do this yeah, once. Yeah, I know. Look, the thing is, Monty, uh, I did tell her that. She needs to get out of town. She's looking for an airfare out of here. Now, she can get you 200 new in a package, a one shot deal. And, you know, I, I said, okay. Oh, you said, okay. Yeah. I mean, get out of here, man. I forget I said anything. No, I'm serious. Get out of here. Me and her, we're going to negotiate this ourselves. Look, I think I changed my mind. Hey, don't worry about it. He's waiting right outside. I'm going to make sure you get home okay and everything. Really? Never mind. Hey, hold on. Wouldn't waste any energy trying to figure out what just happened. Because you're gonna need all of it to find your way home. Huh? Are you all right, Claire? No. What happened? Monty won't be bothering you anymore. Tell me there's a scientific explanation for this. God doesn't need science to explain himself. God? I'm an angel. From God. You're an angel. That is really hard to believe. I know. You see, Claire, sometimes you just have to look inside your heart. When an angel speaks to you, they always speak the truth. And the truth comes from your heart in a way that another's words cannot. The truth I'm going to tell you, Claire, is that you love your mother more than you can express, and the last thing you want to do is leave her. But you don't know what else to do because you've never felt so alone in your life. I don't know what I'm doing here. It just hurt so bad, I had to do something. I wanted to make her hurt as much as I did. And you succeeded. But do you feel any better now? No. Claire, bad things are always going to happen in this life. And people will hurt you. But you can't use that as an excuse to fail or to hurt someone else in return because you just hurt yourself. God 
loves you and he loves your mother and it hurts to see both of you in so much pain both of us your mother has been hurting for a long time and she's been trying so hard to provide for you and protect you that she's she's pushed her own pain aside <sighs> yes she has to learn to understand what you're feeling but you have to try to understand what she needs as well. I never thought of her as being in pain before. The day comes in every daughter's life when she sees her mother, not as a mother, but as another woman with a heart that can be broken. This is that day for you. My mom's the one who needs an angel. She has one. I cannot wait 24 hours. She is missing now. No, she didn't run away. Of course we have problems. She's a teenager. Oh, my God, I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, uh, no, it would be here. She called me here because I usually work late. Right. No, no, no. I, I'll wait right here. Right. Would you like a little advice from your co-host? No. Thank you. Well, how about a little advice from an angel? Tess, I'm just not in the mood for jokes right now. The night your husband left you for the younger, thinner, firmer, blonder, I think Debbie was her name, you stood in your room and you made a vow to God. You said, I'm never going to let anybody hurt me anymore. I'm going to be strong. I just won't feel anything. And they're never going to see me cry. I swear to God. You have to be careful what you swear to God because he hears you. And I'm here to tell you that feeling something is exactly what you need to do. I don't believe in God. Well, that's too bad because he believes in you. He knows how bad you've been hurt and he wants you to let it go. It's time. Why would God send an angel to me? Just to let you know that there's somebody who's never going to leave you. He's going to love you always. That's his promise. Let it out. You don't have to hide anything from anybody anymore. Let it go. Let it go. It's all right. It's all right. I really loved him. And when he left, it just made me feel like nothing. And so I had to find something that would make me so busy I couldn't feel anything. It's quite a world out there. Disposable careers, disposable wives, disposable faith. But God is not going to let you throw away this gift he's given you. Claire is safe, Sandy. Now, you've had some bad times, and you're probably going to have some more. But you've got to decide right now whether the rough times are going to bring you two closer together or pull you apart. There will be another job, but there will never be another Claire. to do off the air. Yeah. I heard about your job. You okay? Sure. 
I'll think of something I can always teach Homek again. I can waitress, whatever it takes. And you are going to that prom, whatever it takes. It's gonna take a miracle. isn't she? So how do you like chaperoning? It's great. Kids come by to spike the punch. When they see me, they beg me to call them farmers. <laughs> wow. You are so beautiful. Mm. Why aren't you wearing your corsage? I asked Eric not to put it on me. Why? I wanted you to. Very carefully. <laughs> Good thing, I think. Yes, they are. And picnics. Picnics are a really good thing. How about next week? <sighs> oh, Jeff, I'm sorry, but I'm leaving town tonight. When are you coming back? I'm not. I've got a job waiting for me. Well, then I guess we'd better have the last dance first. dancing to the same music in there now? Yes. Well, that's good. <laughs> Look what I brought for you. Oh, baby, 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 baby. Tess, do you think we'll ever get back here? Maybe in a hundred years. You never know. You never know. 